Futures Radio Show, sponsored by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world effectively manage risk. For access to free educational tools and resources for the active individual trader, please visit activetrader.cmegroup.com. Every day, traders and investors dive in to tackle the ever-changing markets to find opportunity. Futures Radio Show is your number one source for answers to the questions that all market participants want to ask. Veteran futures trader Anthony Crudelli sits down with the most influential leaders and top traders in the industry. Now, here's your host, Anthony Crudelli. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for this episode with Sarah Potter. Remember, new shows are posted on Mondays and Thursdays. You could subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube. If you're enjoying the show, please leave a review on iTunes. Before I play today's interview for you, I want to give a shout out to the great sponsors of Futures Radio Show. CME Group, Trading Technologies, FTSE Russell, RJO Futures, and Top Step Trader. To learn more about these sponsors and the important things they are doing for Futures Traders, be sure to click on their logos on futuresradioshow.com. Today I spoke with options and futures trader and coach at youcantrade.com, Sarah Potter. Sarah and I chatted about her background and how she taught herself to become a trader. We discussed setting goals, her trading process, instincts versus rules, and last but not least, mental and statistical edge. So without further ado, let me take you right to the interview with Sarah. What is your style of trading? I am a um, options and uh, futures trader that uh, trades pretty actively in the markets. I enjoy um, technical analysis uh, when I'm trading and I like to look at price and make decisions to place trades that are generally I'm in some intraday moves and then sometimes I like to place some trades that are holding for a couple of days up to a couple of weeks. I primarily focus on being fairly active though, so I don't really kind of buy and hold anything too much in the market. I like to be more engaged with uh, the price action of stocks and futures. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in trading futures. Yeah, so futures is where the whole this whole thing began for me. Or I guess that's probably not true. I mean, I think I have the same story that everybody has that after I finished high school, I thought I'm going to be this brilliant stock broker extraordinaire. And, and so I went and bought some stocks and lost all of it. Um, I had that experience, <laughs> but um, decided to kind of dabble in futures as a way because it was a, it was an opportunity for me to trade before I had to work. So I would, before I would head to work every day, I would get up early in the morning, I would trade in Europe. And on what I was looking for was just a quick move, quick pop that I could get in and out of in less than an hour. Um, and then I would go off to work for the, for the day. And what I was doing at the time was just trying to find a way that I could make a little bit of extra money. I mean, I watched on television and thought, man, how come these people can make money in the market and I can't? And what can I do about it? And I just kind of set out as a goal to say, you know, I'm going to try this and try to figure it out. Um, I decided that uh, technical analysis was something that I wanted to learn. And I started at a really, really basic level right at the beginning. And all I was doing was looking at the trend of a chart and just saying to myself, like, what direction do I think we're going at today? And then placing just very basic, very small, small trades uh, in the euro. Of course, it didn't work right away. <laughs> but uh, over time, I started building up the strategy and making it work and figuring out what, what, what worked and what didn't and why it worked and why it didn't. And because I like to look at it visually and really looked at things like looking at a pattern, I started to notice behaviors of how it moved and then kind of developed a strategy to place trades on it. Um, and did that for a long, long time and then started realizing like, oh my goodness, like I think I can really do this. And I wanted to be able to uh, uh, kind of change my goal from just trying to trade a little bit to actually, I want to do this as a career and I want to be able to stop working full time and I want to be able to trade. So it was quite a long process and journey to get there, but um, something I'm pretty proud of that I'm pretty self-taught and um under, I certainly understand the, the the wonderful things about trading and the really crappy things about trading when they don't work. <laughs> I, I love how you started. You were working while you were trading. 
and you started with the Euro. So a couple of questions. First off, what were you doing for your job at the time? Um, so I was a learning consultant, and this is kind of where what I was doing. So I was working. I was doing my master's of education. Uh, it was about adult learning and how people, um, how adults learn. And uh, so as part of doing finishing off the master's thesis, you had to have a project that you were going to apply some of that learning. And I was like, you know what? I really want to learn to trade. So I'm going to take about all the stuff that I'm learning about how we learn best, and I'm going to test it on myself. I'm going to apply this these theories to learning how to trade, and I think the timing of it kind of worked out. And it's funny, you know, like when I first originally started to make the decision, like I want to trade, I wasn't in the mindset yet that I was even going to do this with my master's of education. I actually didn't even see the connection at the time, but it was something that something in the universe, I guess it just kind of all worked out. And at the time that I was just starting to kind of figure things out in the market, because remember, I like, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what a tick was. Like I knew nothing. Um, and so for a long time, just had to learn like what the terms were, let alone how to trade. Um, it, it all just kind of came together really nicely for me to actually be able to test some of these things out. And I'm just, I guess I'm a, a determined individual. And when I kind of set my mind to something, I really want to make that work. And um, so I took some of the knowledge that I had from what I was learning. And then also being being a, an instructional curriculum consultant at the time, I would I used to go in and help people with professional development or help people um, improve different areas that they were working on. So I took a lot of that learning and focused it on myself when it came to trading. First off, I want to comment on how you studied the lingo because I think that so many new traders come into the business without learning the language. Trading is a language. Yeah. And if you don't know the language, how are you going to learn? This goes back to one of the advantages of being on the trading floor was we had a manual and we had to learn what everything was. So this way, when we were on the trading floor working for brokers or traders, we understood what they were saying. And that's just 101. So I think new traders out there, learn the language, learn the lingo before you begin uh, learning how to trade. Next question I have is, why the euro? Why did you decide that was the first market you were going to begin trading? And also tell us what you were looking at to make your trade decisions while trading the euro. Okay, I'm going to be super honest with you. I have no real reason why the euro was the one that worked for me <laughs> other than the timing. It was time. just, it was the timing, right? So I'd, I mean, a bunch of all the futures trade all the time, but so I, when I was getting up and I was getting, this is Eastern time, right? I was up really early in the morning and it was the only one that was actually moving it up. So I would look at the ES and look at the Russell. Like I was looking at all the different markets all the time because I wanted, obviously something like the Russell would have been a bit, um, probably better, easier to trade, but um, it just wasn't, it wasn't moving enough. And I, it was just where I could recognize pattern, where I was starting to spot whether or not something was actually moving in the same direction. So I was really just looking for a trend. Um, this is like way back. And I, I should certainly preface what I do now is, is probably more sophisticated than what I did back then. Um, what I did back then was just looking, literally looking for up or down. Um, and I tried to take what I tried to do with trading and what I think was, I was effective at was getting back to like the core things that really matter. Didn't matter. I didn't look at it, almost simplifying it, taking something that everyone talks about and makes it sound so complicated but the root, especially with futures trading, the root of futures trading, it's only going to go in two directions. Um, and, and that's it. And, and we have to think that way. And it's not about overcomplicating a strategy that, you know, all these different things have to set up in order and all of these eight things set up and all these internals in, or indicators set up, then I'm going to place a trade. When you really just start looking at price and just start noticing what happens at specific times. And so that's, to me, the euro was just working um, uh, that – I could see the time and then say, okay, look, like it's usually around this time, the market was moving up. It was changing directions here. And so that was that I would just look for that same change of direction that would happen around the same time every day. If it had, if it set up and it did that, that, that day, then I would place a trade as long as it, it always had to be trending in the same direction overall. So like on the longer term charts, like a daily or a weekly overall, the market was still moving up. And so I was just looking for a shift in direction. And if that's set up, I place the trade. The one thing I was good at at the beginning that I probably didn't realize was really, really helpful for me 
was the ability to be patient and was the ability to have days on end where I wouldn't place a trade or I would sit there and do nothing. And sometimes doing nothing is actually the best thing to do because you can't put pressure on yourself to find a trade every day or every time you're there. You have to be okay with, sometimes you're going to look at the monitor and you're going to spend hours there and there really isn't anything good enough that deserves your money, that deserves your risk to put it there. You will work hard for your money. And so the market has to work for you. The market needs to set up for you, for you to put that risk down. You don't have to work for them. Um, and I think that kind of mentality was really helpful at the beginning. But I think there's also a bit of luck to it. Like I would, I don't know why the Euro works well. I don't trade the Euro anymore. I've, I've moved on from that. Um, also because I don't need to wake up early. <laughs> so, um, I don't need to do that as much anymore. From the Euro, I did transition, uh, especially when I was scaling up my trading positions and really trying to do this. Um, when I was trying to go from, you know, I'm just trying to make a little bit of money to I really want to do this for a career, that I did start shifting into um, the Russell, uh, the ES, the mini, which we've talked about before. Because at the time, I mean, obviously, it was once the market's open, those move quite a bit. They, they can trend really well and started looking for the same type of patterns around there. In my books, the specific setups that I used to trade way back then are, are in that book. Did you have a mentor or anybody helping you learn how to trade? No, I didn't. And yeah. So here's a, I'm, so this is the one thing that also really bothered me about trading. And so I would, I want, I knew that I wanted to do this, but I felt like I didn't connect with anybody because I didn't have a, a background of working on the floor at all. I, I don't have a business degree. I don't, I don't have that experience. So I felt it, it was really hard to connect with someone because a lot of people will say, you know, oh, well, this is where I came from. And I found it really intimidating at the beginning because remember, I'm coming from someone that didn't even know what the words were. And I didn't want to admit to people that I didn't know those things, but I knew that I wanted to learn those things. So I spent a lot of time scouring the internet. I spent a lot of time, what I ended up meaning to do was compare people to other people because there's also a lot of false information out there. Um, and do you, do you find this? So especially when I learned how to trade, most people define terms in trading with, with the exact same term. So if you look up like, I don't know anything, say ticks, look up the definition that everybody who defines that word typically uses the same definition. Like there's a lot of repetition in how people explain things. And so I would listen to the explanations. I'm like, I still get it. Like I don't understand it took like going and finding things and comparing and contrasting to other things and, and saying, well, does this really matter? Does this really mean I had friends like my husband was uh, at the time was working in a, a mutual fund company. So, I mean, I had someone to bounce some ideas off of um, as I'm sure, you know, or lots of people know, just because you work in, um, in some financial institutions also doesn't mean you know how to trade your own money. <laughs> yeah. Different worlds. <laughs> but, so he was, he, yeah, he was helpful that way, but I don't think I had one person. That's a big reason why I do what I do today at You Can Trade, because I had basically said to myself that I think we need a different place out there in this in this industry where people can come and, and feel like I can ask a question. That's why I wrote the book that I did. I am trying to be a bit of that voice of change, as I know you are, and I appreciate that as well, that where we can create some kind of mentorship or leadership for other people to be able to follow the same process, to be able to feel comfortable to ask questions um, and to help other people be successful or, or reach the potentials that they're looking for out of the market. Yeah, you do a fantastic job with You Can Trade. We'll get to that in a little bit. I, I, I want to go back to some of the things that you did early on, and I want to talk about how you were able to develop your strategy and really block the noise. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. I mean, I think that so many new traders struggle to block the noise. There's just too much information out there. Everybody comes into this business chasing money right away and they could easily mm -hmm. go down the wrong path and put themselves out of business before they even really give themselves a chance. What you did, some of the things that you did early on that, that really caught my ear were you chose a market that you saw reactions that, that resonated with you personally. So you, the Euro... You didn't know much about it, but you saw something. It, it, to me, it sounds like you saw, like there was, you found an edge by watching yeah. that market, right? Mm -hmm. It fit into your mm -hmm. schedule. Everything you mm -hmm. did was personalized to you. And I think that's, 
Man, that's so tough to do because I think everybody tries to be like other people, especially nowadays with social media and everything. They struggle to find their own identity. And you did this early on. I want to talk about some of the details now. Just walk us through what your current strategy is and what market you're trading. Yeah, sure. So from futures way back in the day, I also did started getting into options. So the, the, the best thing and the worst thing about futures trading is you can make a ton of money and you can lose a ton of money. And uh, futures trading, I found like it really kept you stuck to a monitor. So once I had left my job and I was trading futures now full time, I'm like, well, this really isn't changing my lifestyle enough because I'm still stuck in front of a computer all day waiting for things to set up. So that's where I started dabbling into options trading. And I started saying, okay, well, how can I find now some strategies that I can still, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, set and forget it, but it, that I can still pay attention to what's going on in the market, but I can still go do something else. I want to go for a run. I also had two kids in that process and, and I had babies and babies don't really let you, you know, trade futures whenever you want to. So I, this is where I moved into options trading and this is where I did a lot more swing trading. And I think I'm actually a really good options trader because I started trading futures first. I attribute all of my ability in options trading to the length of time that I took to sitting and watching how futures price move on a chart and looking at that dome. And because I did that for so long with futures, I found I was actually able to pick up options trading faster because I'm pretty good at entering and exiting trades and that's transferring the skill from futures. Now from options, I mean, I've been doing options for years now as well, and I like to kind of constantly look to see what else I can do. I also like to trade options on futures or futures options. And I also like to do these days, I've picked up doing micro. So I've been doing MES, trading the MES quite a bit. And it's funny because it's kind of all coming full circle now where I'm going. And I guess that's just how life takes you, right? Like, through the markets based on what you have, what time you have during the day and, and what you're focused on. But the micros now are a really nice opportunity to get back into futures, get back into that strong directional move, directional assumptions. But because the the moves now are so much smaller, I don't mind leaving them on longer. So I'll let trades run a bit longer. And so much of the trade setups that I would use in SPY, I'm now applying back into micro minis. So it's almost just like you don't ever stop learning and you can transfer things that you know from one market really easily into the next market as long as you're willing to obviously adapt. I mean, everything isn't identical, but there's things that you can learn from one thing to the next. Um, and so that, that's been quite helpful. One thing I wanted to mention, if you don't mind, if I just step back, one thing I thought was really important when I first started to trade and I try to tell everybody, my goal when I first started trading was never to make money. My goal when I first started trading was to have wine on a Friday. And the way that I, <laughs> the way that I looked at trading was I liked my fr Friday night is when I like to have to open a nice bottle of wine and have friends over. And I like, that's my thing on Fridays. And the way I looked at trading was I wanted to make enough money to buy a nice bottle of wine on a Friday. And so if I had a bad week, I was still going to have wine on Friday, but I was going to have like a $12 bottle. But if I had a good week of trading, then that's where I was allowing myself to indulge and buy a really expensive bottle of wine. So the, when I was, I took the pressure off me when I was first starting to trade because the goal was never to make a specific amount of money every week. The goal was attributed to something else, so something fun, something that didn't affect my life at all. I was still going to have wine on Fridays, but <laughs> one was going to be a much nicer bottle than the other. And the outcome, the goal, like, did I achieve my goal that week? Making something achievable, making something fun. It takes a lot of the pressure and stress off of trading when you first begin if you don't just focus on a specific dollar amount you're trying to make every week. I do think that that was a big reason why the whole thing worked for me at the beginning. I could tell you from personal experience when I had money goals, and I actually just tweeted about this not too long ago, that's what I had my worst days following my best days because I didn't have a plan and what to do when I actually made money. And I think that's why a lot of new traders are just in this, they spin their wheels. It's not that they can't make money, but when they make it, they give it away right away. They don't have a, 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 a they, they have a money goal, but they don't have something like wine on Friday tied to it. They don't have something tied to it. And that was a mistake that I made that cost me a lot of money because when I was actually making money, 
I would just be like, okay, I got this money in my account. I didn't have, I didn't reward myself anyway. It's just, you know, it's like you made some money. That's your job. Right. And then the next thing you know, the next day I would lose sight of, <laughs> of, of risk and I would give it all back. And I did that so many times. And it was because for me, at least I found that because I didn't have something tied to my money goal that I just, I lost my place a lot. And hearing all yeah. these things that you did early on, like I said, it's just really impressive to me. And I, I want to talk specifically about your trade decisions. So let, let's talk about you sitting at the screen and what technicals are you looking at? What gets you to the point to where you say, you know what, here is something I like, and then walk us through how you would get into that trade. Sure. So regardless of whether I'm trading futures or options, I always look at the same style of chart. So look at multiple time frames, but I like to look at it all together. So on the left-hand side of my screen, I have a weekly chart, then I have a daily chart, then I have a 60-minute chart, and then I have a five-minute chart. And I like to look at whatever market I'm looking at. I want to look at all, all of those time frames at the same time. On my charts, I have a pretty clean chart. I don't use a lot of indicators. I use exponential moving averages. The exponential moving averages on each one of those time frames are the 8, the 13, the 21, the 100, and the 200. And those are EMAs, not SMAs. And so the first thing that I want to do when I glance at my screens is just literally ask myself, is this going up, sideways, or down? If it's going sideways, then that immediately is going to say in my mind, okay, then I'm looking at specific strategies or I'm going to look away. And when I'm coaching people who are just starting, um, because I've coached a lot of people to begin, I actually encourage people to only place trades in something that they think is actually moving up or down. There has to be a clear direction in what they're looking for. If you can see that on more than one of the timeframes, ideally you're seeing that on a weekly and a daily chart, that's where I'm going to go in and start spending more time on that, that stock or that futures market, the contract, and say, okay, now I'm going to start looking for specific levels that I want to place a trade in. And what I want to look for is how is price. Oh, by the way, they, I use candlesticks um, on the charts. So, and then what I want to look for is how far away is price right now to the nearest exponential moving average? And is the market overall on a daily and a weekly chart actually moving in a trend? And those are the two key pieces that'll really make me sit there and say, okay, yeah, I think I could find a trade here. Or if it's not there, move on to the next thing which is so key, right? You don't, if you can't find the, some basic root um, pieces of evidence that you're looking for, then you need to, then I think anyways, you should just move on and look for something else. Don't, don't try to dig for something that's not there when you're trading. And a lot of people fall into that. You don't need to do that at all. So we're looking to see how price is moving. If ideally, if I'm buying a call or if I'm going to buy, if I'm going to go long, then I would um, have, I would want to see price of, whatever market we're trading here, pretty close to the 8 EMA on a 60 minute chart. And ideally, it's already starting to move in the same direction that I'm trying to place a trade in. So if I'd say I'm buying a call, you know, and I'm looking, I'm buying a call because I have an assumption that there, there is going to be a larger move. So I want to take advantage of that by picking a strategy that lines up with how that is moving. So if I'm buying a call, price is nice, sitting nicely around the 60 EMA around the, sorry, the eight EMA on the 60 minute chart, then that's where I'm going to look. And ideally these days in particular, the trades that have been most successful for me are when I'm buying in the same direction of the overall trend, but it hasn't hit the high yet. Those have been just, I don't know, pretty consistent winners um, by just placing trades when after something is pulled back a little bit and you just pulled it up until it reaches the high again. Super simple. I mean, and then I think it's just good proof that a really effective strategy doesn't actually have to be very complicated. In terms of like internals or, or indicators, I don't really use a lot. I have one, I have my own, it's a proprietary indicator, which people can use if they need some help, especially starting at the beginning. If you don't really know what all the lines and stuff mean, you know, that can be very helpful. You don't have to have it though. Because I do believe that you want to just watch, watch for price, watch and wait for direction um, and get to know Get to know your stocks. Get to know the times that they like to move. So I like to trade um, in the mornings. It's my favorite time. I generally like to place trades um, around 1030 and, and onwards up until about 12 o'clock. That's usually when I have most of my trades um, entered for the day. 
And ideally, I'm exiting trades first thing in the morning from the day previous. That's kind of how I've kind of liked to rotate them on and off. Obviously, if I'm futures trading, um, especially even the micros, I don't hold those overnight. I just place those trades usually first thing sometime just after the morning open. I don't usually place trades in the first 15 minutes. Um, I, I notice, and this is me personally, that the market usually shifts again after the open. So sometime around 10 o'clock. Um, and these days, it's actually been into 1030. I've been noticing that that's where we start seeing the real moves of the day. And so I've been enjoying being a little more patient in the morning and placing those trades a little bit later in the day. And then as you can tell, or as I hope you can tell, by the afternoon, I'm usually trying to do something else. <laughs> that, 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 that's the fun time. So I'm trying not to place trades at that point. Hopefully it's just sitting and making profits for me. Hey everybody, I want to take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, FTSE Russell. They are a leading global provider of benchmarks, analytics, and data solutions. The Russell 2000 Index is a key benchmark for small cap U.S. stocks. Be sure to check out the E-mini Russell 2000 Index Futures, contract symbol RTY. For more information on FTSE Russell and their products, please visit footsierussell.com. A lot of questions. So let's start with the first one. Do you look at any fundamentals, read the news? I mean, is any of that in your strategy? The short answer is no. Um, I really just look at price. But I think I, I still need to be aware of what's going on in the news. So while I'm not going to look at, um, you know, like so the U.S., the China, tariffs. I mean, obviously, that is a big issue. And obviously, when we hear a little ounce of something that goes on in, in politics, that's affecting the market. So that's important to me. And I want to know that. But I'm not going to hedge a position or I'm not going to try to get ahead of some kind of news and make an assumption of where I think that market's move, moving based on what's going on in the news. I don't do that. Um, that's just my personal preference. I prefer to wait to see the move happening in the market, and then I'll place trades in it. Now, especially if we're talking about futures, I mean, FOMC is important. And so uh, when there's news out, I generally won't place trades as much. So if I look back, um, FOMC, uh, so Wednesdays, I generally just place futures trades. I just choose to avoid it. I don't know. I just have found over the years, because news can make something that was trending or was looking like it was in a pattern, the news can shift it and you just don't really know. I don't like those odds. And so I'll choose not to place a trade and wait rather than trying to get ahead of it. Just to get an overview of your strategy. So you're looking at exponential moving averages. I think you said 8, 13, 21, 100, and 200. And you talked about mm -hmm. basically looking at some longer term charts all the way down to the shorter term charts, right? And you're using candlesticks, same across the board. Every chart looks the same with the same moving averages on there, or if you're using indicators, the same indicators across all of them, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We you, you explained how you come in the morning, you look at the market, and then you get in. Talk to us about how you would work a stop. Um, I know that sometimes you're doing options, so maybe talk to us about how maybe you would be wrong on an options trade as well. Uh, and then how are you determining targets? Yeah, okay. So to determine targets, because everyone always wants to talk about the winners first. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, you want to hit those profit targets. I generally like to view it based on using on the, the average two range. So I have the average two range typically sitting on my chart, on the daily chart. And I like to look to see how something has moved already on the day and how much does it usually move within the day. And I try to hit a, set a target uh, for profit based on, on that number. Um, so if it generally moves like three dollars i'm going to look for about a three dollar move to happen um and then i'm going to get out of the trade um so i do it that way now for stops i am not i'm not a good person to follow i think on that um here's my take on stops um i like to before i even enter a trade what i like to do is write down the reasons why i'm entering a trade and i always talk about three column chart i do i don't i don't know and and you think about it like you're collecting evidence so i write down in my i do column all the things that i the reasons why i'm placing the trade why what am i confident in that i am seeing as to why i want to get into the trade and then in the other column i'll write down what i think i don't have or what i'm unsure about i don't really know if this is going to work or these things and i use that basically as the foundation of managing the trade 
every day or every time I go and log back in and look at the position, I go, I want to go back to the evidence that I collected. If the, there is still more evidence on the positive side than the negative side, or in the do, I do column and the I don't column, then I will continue to hold the trade. So I don't place a stock on a specific dollar amount, but, and this is why I'm saying that I'm, I, that's not where people should start. That's not where I started. Um, this is what I do now. Um, so maybe, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um, I do think if you're just starting to trade, especially futures, you do need to stop. A good way to think about it is to think about how much are you really willing to risk um, and place stops based on that. The problem with stops, and which is why I didn't, I don't use them anymore, is that how many times have you had that feeling that you get stopped out and you were just a little too soon and the trade would have worked out for you? Um, so the way I, the other reason that I do with trading, especially with options, I would rather buy a cheaper option and risk more of it than buy a more expensive option. So for options in particular, I don't usually buy options that cost any more than about four or five dollars. Um, so I'm generally placing trades if I'm buying positions, but I'm in money a little bit, but I'm not really in the money any further than about a Delta 65, Delta 70. Um, I manage the risk a little bit that way as well by trying to stay in cheaper options. It sounds very similar to when I talk to systematic trend followers. They have a plus one, a zero, or a negative one, bullish, neutral, or bearish. But you're using your own discretion, right? It's it's like you, you're a discretionary trader who's basically took your strategy and, and made it systematic in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think just, I don't know, it's just been so long. Like to me that I've reached a level of automaticity as well, right? Like I've been doing this for a long time now. It's either there or it's not. Um, and I'm, I've learned to rely. I, I rely on the strategy. I believe in the strategy. I've tested the strategy for a long time. So generally I'm pretty good at assessing when I need to get out or not. And I don't know if it's become instinctual maybe now because I've been doing it for so long, but I don't put the hard stops in um, anymore. So let me I ask do, you this. When I first started with it. Yeah. So let Go me ahead. ask you this then. Do you, I, I, and the last question, I, don't, I almost didn't want to put words in your mouth, but do you consider yourself discretionary or systematic? I'm not sure if I feel comfortable being in one or the other. I think yeah. I'm a little bit of both. I'm not yeah, I mean, I mean, look at here. Here, I'll tell you what the way I feel about myself as well. I mean, it, it just sounds similar to even the way that I I think because when you do this for a while, your goal is to refine your your system and your strategy to the point to where you become less discretionary, right? I mean, I, I don't want to be going in there and looking at my strategy in every single instance. Is this a good trade? Is this not a good trade? Should I take this one? Should I not? You, we take the thinking out of it. So for me, what I've done is I've found my my favorite setups. And so I just decide at this, with my discretion, okay, well, today this is coinciding with the macro theme. There's a lot of things lining up. Maybe I'm going to trade a little bit bigger today or there's not a lot of things lining up. I might trade a little bit smaller. So for me, it really would come down to position sizing is really where my discretion comes in. But my, but my strategy is, has become more systematic because we've refined it, right? You, you look at it, you know it, going back to you at the beginning of your career and how you developed everything to personalize to you. Uh, and as years go by, the experience is set in, you refine your strategy to where you're like, you know what? This is, I believe in this. I've seen this work. I'm taking this trade. Let's go to where I said that I'm discretionary in position sizing. Are all of your trades the same size or do you vary in contract size? Yeah. Yeah, that's another good point. And even think about it that way. But yeah, so I, I'll vary my contract size depending on how I'm feeling that day. So in that respect, I'd be very discretionary. Yeah. Um, based on how much confidence I have in the market that day. Also, I mean, okay, so maybe that's where, see, you're helping me. Um, maybe that's where I, I spend a bit more time being reflective of what's going on in the news too. Not that I... I like to look at the headlines of news, and if there's like a lot of headlines that have a ton of uncertainty, then I won't put on as many contracts that day. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I I guess I'm a hybrid. I'm a little of both. Yeah, I definitely consider myself a hybrid. I, I remember saying this uh, 
I don't know how many years back, and and people are like, no, you have to be discretionary or systematic. I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I don't <laughs> fall in either category myself either. And and when people have asked me, I, I would always say first off that I'm discretionary because that's just kind of the way I feel about myself. But when I look at my decision making in my strategy, I don't just trade in a random place. I trade because there is reason to, and and there's things that back up that reasoning my discretion really just comes with my experience and hopefully that puts me in some better position. Sometimes not, and it doesn't work out that yeah. way, but um, I, I want to move on and, and talk about a, a few other things before we get into rapid fire. You mentioned instincts today. This is something that I really believe that, that day traders like us have to have. We have to have instincts and I have said many times that I have instincts, not rules. My strategy has rules, but me as a trader, I have instincts. Where do you stand on that? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I would like to say that I'm rule bound, but we're human and humans have emotion. And in your emotion is that gut, that gut will tell you sometimes whether something's good or bad. I would say that having instincts is absolutely essential and that's what's going to give you like so let's just pull it back for a second when people learn to trade they learn from a textbook and they think if they learn what's in a textbook they will be a great trader but a great trader is not a book right a great trader is a person and so while you have to know and understand all of that knowledge that you will consume from any book you still have to be able to apply it and in the application of the learning is where instinct comes into play so I don't think you can have one or the other either. Um, but at the same time, if, if someone is too instinctual, then you're just gambling. And and so there has to be some type of plan that's rooted in what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I do think that having awareness, um, awareness of yourself is really important when you're trading as well. To be successful, you have to also have an awareness of how, how you're feeling that day how you are being, you know, how are you responding to how the markets are moving? How great of a trade did you have the day before or an hour before? You know, how how, how is that affecting and influencing your trading as well? Very I well know, said. Did I answer that question? Or? Yes, oh, okay. and, and I don't think people talk about this enough. I mean, trading is a journey of oneself. If you look, someone looks at my Twitter account, that's what it says. And, and that is, to me, what is not talked about enough. We all can learn technicals. We all can learn the fundamentals of the market, but to actually become a trader, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot more to it. Um, I, I want to talk about two types of edges. This is a conversation I've had with a lot of people on the show, on social media. I'll tell you where I stand. I think that there's two types of edges that people, it's great to have both, but you definitely need to have one. And it's mental and or statistical edge. Thoughts on that? Hmm. I think it's all about the mental edge, I probably would say. Yeah, and that's where I, um, that's, that's where I landed too, but go on. I'm, I'm curious just what, why you believe that. I, well, I think it's rooted in just the same thing of what we really just said. It's, it's because we, at the end of the day, are still the, the people that are executing the positions, that are interpreting the data, data and making decisions that you have in the moment to do what you have to do. So um, it, the, where you will be successful is your ability to control that and, and how you are able to leverage uh, the, the mental toughness and um, awareness to be successful in the market. Yeah. And then the reason why I even started that conversation a little while back on social media was because if you're going to be a discretionary trader, hybrid like we are, like we talked about today, mental edge is to me the most important edge you need to work on. Because if you really have a that strong of a statistical edge, then just automate it. <laughs> you you know, then, then, then that's your edge. Uh, and for me, I've always felt that I have some statistical edge, but overall for me as a trader, my edge has come from the mental side uh, of things. Um, last question before, actually, not last question, two questions before we get into rapid fire. A lot of talk coming from me these days about doing things away from the screen. You and I just got done discussing mental versus statistical edge, and we both agreed that we lean more towards the mental edge. What are you doing away from the screens to help you 
become a better trader when you're at the screens? Oh, that's a really good question. So um, I actually think I'm a good trader. I'm a better trader now because I'm able to walk away from the computer. I'm able to put the phone down and not look all the time. Um, That was probably also uh, learned because of behaviors because I had both of my kids while I was trading, like my second my, she's three now, but you know, she was four days old when I started trading again. So you kind of help. You have to learn to multitask, and sometimes multitasking means the trading gets put on the back burner because you're going to go change diaper, right? And whatever happens in that position happens in that position. But it kind of taught me that you don't have to be there all the time. So I do believe in being very active. I'm a very active, healthy individual, and I think that the more you can train in other areas, the you can all of those attributes make you a good trader as well. Um, I like to train for um, half marathons and I do some half Ironmans and longer events sometimes. And, and I do that, that, that mental stiffness or uh, um, ability to delay your gratitude sometimes and say, okay, I've got to put some hard work in here. I have to get up every day and do something. So in order to reach this goal, there are things I have to do to improve. Having all of that mindset and doing it somewhere else and then transferring some of that back into trading, I think is really helpful um, and it's really good to go and have, for me, like I would like to go climb a mountain and have a really tough workout when a trade's not working uh, and then come back and then reassess to see how I feel. And sometimes, the, I mean, I know I said I don't do stops, so I, everyone has to understand that sometimes the trade's not working. And the best thing I do is say, guys, I'm going, I'm going, I'll, I'm going to give it 20 minutes and see what it looks like then and then reassess at that point. So sometimes I, I do that and that's really helpful. Um having a hobby outside of trading is really important. Trading is great, but trading can consume you. It, it, you. You can feel like, oh, I'm going to miss this if I walk away. And you have to be okay with walking away and doing something else. Sometimes it makes you a better trader. Yeah. Trading at one point in my life did consume me. And everybody knows the story. I had a heart attack at 36 years old. I, I allowed it to consume me. I thought I, because I was eating right, working out, that all of the things, all of those basic things that people think make you healthy um, didn't work for me. And I needed to unplug. And it sounds to me as though a lot of the things you're doing, you're unplugging. You're going and thinking mm-hmm. about and focusing on something totally different. So when you come back, your mind is clear. Yes, absolutely. Last question before we get into rapid fire today. Listen, you're, you're tough. <laughs> Hearing your backstory, you fought your way through to becoming a successful day trader. What advice would you give to the new traders out there beginning their career as traders? What I want every single person who's even thinking about learning to trade is I want you to remember that at one point you learned to ride a bike. And at one point when you were a kid, you saw other people doing it and said, I know I really want to do this. And you probably jumped on the bike and you probably skinned your knee. And then you became a teenager and you decided, I want to learn to drive a car. I want a driver's license. I want that independence. And so you went and you took driver's lessons. And now you drive at a level of automaticity. You don't think about driving anymore. You just know that you can hop in a car and you can get from point A to point B. When you decide to trade, you need to remember that you are going to skin your knee. You might not know how to drive standard. You might stall out the car. You might get in a car accident. But you will learn and eventually you will get to a point where you can do it and you don't need to think about it anymore. And I want every single person who thinks about trading to remember those points in your life when you knew nothing about something, but now you can do it without an issue. And you have to do the same thing and go through the same process with trading. It doesn't matter how many great people and people's courses you take, how many people you follow, how many books you read. You're going to have to go through the process of learning how to do it, how to apply the knowledge for yourself. You need to be able to be around long enough to learn from your mistakes because trading is a skill like any other skill. And as long as you can take it small, figure out what you're doing wrong to fix it, anybody can do this. If, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I don't have a background in it. But you have to be determined enough to get up every day and figure out what's wrong and figure out how to fix it, to be okay with sometimes not knowing everything because you never will, and to understand that it's a skill and a journey to follow and a process that you have to develop for yourself so that you can be really great at it, but you can be. 
loving this interview, but we have rapid fire questions up next. So if you're ready for those. I'm ready. All right, everybody. Our rapid fire segment is sponsored by Trading Technologies. Trade the global markets with TT. They are the world's fastest commercially available futures trading platform. Now with integrated tools for advanced options trading, cryptocurrencies, and trade surveillance. You can try TT now for free at tryttnow.com. Sarah, first question for you. What trader has influenced your life the most and why? Well, when I first started trading, I had a tough time finding somebody. So the person now, I, his name is Sean Mahoney. He is actually in my trading channel at You Can Trade, and he is someone who helps me out in my room. Um, but he has been helpful for my confidence. I love his attitude with trading and how helpful he is with everybody else. So to me, he is a very important person to me in trading. What was the hardest thing for you to overcome in trading? It's okay to not be 100% perfect at it, but to be okay at it. How has your trading process evolved over the years? I, my process is constantly changing. It, it never can be the same because it's going to adapt based on how the markets are moving and um, what's moving at the time and how much time I have with the market to be able to trade. What is one attribute that you believe every trader should have? You have to have grit. You have to, that, that is so important. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't have that ability to get up, do it again, improve, fix it, or celebrate it and do it again the next day, you will never be successful. Favorite book about trading? <laughs> my book. <laughs> so I wrote a book called How You Can Trade Like a Pro. Um, my favorite book, though, that's really helped me a lot with trading is a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. It's not a trading book, but it's about how to look at life, and it's very helpful when you think about trading. If you had to pick a profession other than trading, what would it be? I always wish I was a naturopath, which is completely different than this. Um, helping people heal themselves naturally would be something I wish I had known more about. What is the best piece of advice that you received about trading? That there's always another trade. And um, sometimes the best trade that you take is the one you didn't actually get into at all. If you could go back in time and give the younger you a piece of advice, what would it be? I should have had more confidence to do this sooner. I spent so much time wish, thinking I needed to know more um, when I actually knew a lot, a lot earlier. I just didn't have enough confidence in myself. If you had an elevator pitch me your edge in trading, what would you say? Uh, my edge in trading is the ability to um, be able to keep it simple, to be able to keep things realistic and authentic. Last question for today. What's your favorite thing to do when you're not trading? I love to get out for a run or a bike ride uh, out in nature and enjoy just being outside. Sarah, where can people find you on social media and give us a website to check out? Yes. Yeah, so I run a live trading room where you can watch me trade every day and that's at youcantrade.com. There's also a lot of other coaches there as well. You can catch me online at you can trade. Um, and Facebook, it's everywhere. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of it. You check out, you can trade. Sarah, this was awesome. You're awesome. I, I, I'm so glad uh, to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining me on Futures Radio Show. Thank you. Well, let's do this again. Thank you for listening to Futures Radio Show. If you have any questions or comments for myself or my guests, please visit futuresradioshow.com and sign up to be a premium member for free. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes.